Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Stompy deck featuring four copies of a Vivian Arcbor Ranger as one of the centerpieces of the deck. For Mana Planeswalker that starts out at four loyalty and her plus one ability lets us distribute two plus one plus one counters among up to two target creatures and they also gain a trample until end of turn so even better than the Ajani Adversary of Tyrants plus ability. Then her minus three gives us access to a bit of removal letting target creature we control deal damage equal to its power to target creature or Planeswalker. So kind of like a Domri's Ambush Rabbit Bite type effect. And then the minus five lets us choose a creature card we own from outside the game, reveal it and put it into our hand. So that's similar to Karn the Great Creator where we get to search up artifacts from the sideboard. Now we get to search up any creature from the sideboard, which is why we have a sideboard full of one-off creatures to search up with Vivian. So despite having a 15 card sideboard, the deck is still made for best of one. So Vivian does a ton for the deck, helping us grow our creatures. We even have some synergies with the plus one plus one counters that we'll get to in a second, giving us access to a bit of removal. And then the utility that the minus five provides, helping us search up the perfect creature to face a certain situation. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We're a pretty aggressive green deck, so unlike decks that are trying to ramp a lot, we're trying to beat down with some oversized green creatures. At one mana, of course, we still have the full playset of Lanor Elves, since most green decks will want us, helping us accelerate out our planeswalkers and more expensive creatures. Then we also have a full playset of Pelt Collector, which is excellent in this deck. One mana for a 1-1 creature that whenever we play a creature that has more power than Pelt Collector, Pelt Collector receives a plus one plus one counter, and as long as Pelt Collector has three or more plus one plus one counters, it also has Trample, so also has a bit of synergy with Vivian, since it can put even more counters on the Pelt Collector, and then permanently give it Trample. Then at 2 mana, we've got 4 copies of Growth Chamber Guardian, 2 mana for a 2-2, two, two, and it has Adapt 2 for 3 mana, meaning that we can spend 3 mana to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, if it didn't already have any plus 1 plus 1 counters. And then whenever 1 or more plus 1 counters are placed on the Growth Chamber Guardian, we can search our library for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So we can search up additional copies and chain multiple Growth Chamber Guardians together, giving us a bit of card advantage. And of course it has great synergy with Vivian Arcbow Ranger, because whenever we use the plus 1 ability to put a counter on the Growth Chamber Guardian, we get to search up an additional copy. And important to note is that even though the Growth Chamber Guardian might already have a plus one plus one counter placed on it, if we put an additional counter on it with Vivian, we still get to search up an additional copy. It's just the Adapt 2 that we can only use if it didn't already have any plus one plus one counters on it. One of the major drawbacks of playing Growth Chamber Guardian nowadays is that it kind of gets caught in the crossfire that Legion's End provides, since that will deal with the Growth Chamber Guardian in play, as well as getting additional copies in our hand that we might have searched up. So Legion's End is very good against it, but uh, despite that card being quite popular, the Growth Chamber Guardian is still excellent in this deck. Then we also have four copies of Paradise Druid, which is another mana creature helping us ramp out our more expensive spells. And it also has two power, so it can still attack and block pretty well. And it also helps us grow the Pelt Collector, so curving Pelt Collector into Paradise Druid is pretty nice. Then we also have the full playset of Barkai Troll, another addition from M20 and fits perfectly into this deck, as it's a 2 mana 3 3 essentially, a 2 2 that enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So if we have a 2 2 Pelt Collector, it will still grow up to a 3 3 thanks to the troll as it enters the battlefield as a 3 3 creature. And by paying 1 mana and removing a plus 1 plus 1 counter from the troll, it will gain hexproof until end of turn, protecting it from spot removal spells. And it's another creature that synergizes greatly with Vivian, since we can kind of replenish the plus 1 plus 1 counters, so we can keep giving it hexproof proof if we need to. And then we also have two copies of Voracious Hydra, not really a two-drop, more a card we're trying to cast later in the game as an X and double green creature that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, and it also has Trample, and then we can choose between two modes, either double the number of plus one plus one counters on it, or let it fight target creature we don't control, giving us access to a bit more removal. So Voracious Hydra is an excellent creature to top off our curve with, and a great follow-up to Nissa who shakes the world, as we'll get access to a ton of mana to sink into the X. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Steel Leaf Champion, of course one of the reasons to stay mono green in this deck, as we get access to a 5-4 that cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, which is quite relevant against an army of zombie tokens for example out of the Scapeshift deck, so we can still potentially deal those last points of damage and finish off the opponent. Then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Vinemare, an excellent creature to load a bunch of plus 1 plus 1 counters onto, as it has built-in hexproof and cannot be blocked by black creatures, so kind of continuing the theme of being able to attack past an army of zombie tokens, and it's also an elemental horse, so it doesn't get swept up by Chandra's minus 3 ability, dealing 3 damage to all non-elementals, 
So it is a pretty difficult creature for most decks to deal with, outside of Kaya's Wrath. It doesn't have a ton of weaknesses, so an excellent creature to be playing right now. And again, a great target for Vivian, which is one of the main cards in the deck that we want to draw basically in every opening hand, as it provides a ton of advantage over a longer game. And then topping off our curve, we've got three copies of Nissa, who shakes the world, which doubles the mana we can generate with our forest, which is nice when playing a giant Voracious Hydra, or maybe adapting Growth Chamber Guardian and replaying multiple copies and then also turns lands into 3-3 three, three elemental creatures with Vigilance, and the fact that our land can attack right away is great at taking out opposing Planeswalkers, and then if we ever get to the minus 8 ultimate ability, we can search up all the forests in our deck and put them in play, and all our forests also become indestructible, and of course then all our top decks will also become better, as we can't draw any more lands. And then the mana base consists of 23 beautiful basic forests, since our curve isn't incredibly high, and we already have 8 mana creatures built into the deck as well, and then taking a look at the one of sideboard that we can search up with Vivian, we've got a Crawl Harpooner as a nice way to take out opposing flyers. We've got a Scavenger as Graveyard Hate that can also maybe gain a bit of life back against the red decks. Loaming Shaman as more Graveyard Hate. We've got a Thrashing Brontodon to take out opposing artifacts and enchantments. Then we've got a one-off copy of a Bloom Hulk, which can proliferate when it enters the battlefield, so it has a bit of synergy with all those plus one plus one counters, and can maybe make it easier to ultimate a Planeswalker. Then we've got Null Hide Ferox, a card that used to be in the main deck, but got moved to the sideboard, as we now have Vivian and Nissa in the main deck, so we want to be casting some non-creature spells, and otherwise the ability becomes a bit of a liability, but still a nice one to search up out of the sideboard sometimes. Then we also have a Shifting Ceratops, which shines against the mono blue and counterspell heavy decks, We've got a Biogenic Ooze as a nice mana sink. Then we've got a one-off Cavalier of Thorns as another reach creature to help us against flyers. And if they kill it, we can still get some value and maybe put something relevant back on top of our deck. We've got a God Eternal Aronos, which can maybe help us close out the game if we have enough creatures in play. We've got Carnage Tyrant as another hexproof uncounterable creature, which shines against control decks. And then we also have a one-off Placa Worm to gain a ton of life against the red decks if we have enough mana. Meteor Golem can help us deal with opposing permanents like Planeswalkers that we otherwise might have difficulty answering, and kind of a second copy of Thrashing Brontodon in that sense as well, helping us deal with artifacts and enchantments. Then we also have Galta Primal Hunger, another card that used to be in the main deck, but now we can simply search it up with Vivian if the moment is right, and we can cast it for just 2 mana and get access to a 12-12 Trampler. And then last but not least we've got another copy of Voracious Hydra, in case we've got access to a ton of mana, maybe in this time play, then Voracious Hydra could be the play. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's not amazing. Um, if we draw two more lands, then it's okay, as we get to go Guardian into Steel Leaf into Vinemare. If we don't draw any additional lands, then uh, this hand could struggle. I think I'm actually mulliganing and look for a more explosive draw. Well, this is definitely a better hand. Get to curve Pelt Collector into Growth Chamber Guardian, adapt on three, and then turn for Vivian. So I think we can keep this and then put Nissa on the bottom. Uh, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Mountain into Firebrand, killing Pelt Collector undoubtedly. Alright, so that's a setback. Growth Chamber Guardian probably also not gonna survive here. Which means our Vivian without any creatures in play isn't great. If somehow Growth Chamber Guardian survives, then we can adapt and search up another copy. But with uh, four shocks and four lightning strikes, that's probably not happening. Alright, now that we've drawn a couple more lands, we regret bottoming that Nissa. Pyromancer puts us to 18. And a light up a stage. The mono red matchup is usually favorable for the green stompy deck just because our creatures are so much bigger than uh, the ones in the red deck and they often need multiple burn spells to kill one of our creatures. My heart beats in but uh, without any creatures in play we're gonna struggle. Opponent runs out Chandra. And can attack Vivian down to 3 if they want to. We would love to draw another Nyssa. A Vine Mare would be pretty good. <laughs> Alright, I'll take a troll. And we can put two counters on it. Get a nice 5-5 five five with Hexproof. So we can maybe start pressuring this uh, Chandra. 
Find slide up the stage on top. And they're gonna start burning the face. To enable light of the stage. Alright, so our opponent has seen a ton of cards here with all those line of the stages and Chandra in play as well. I'm a survivor. So they can suicide one of their creatures to take out Vivian. And we'll take out a lava runner. I'll return with larger predators. Alright, find a replacement, that's nice. So let's see here. If we kill Chandra, then they get to kill Vivian. So that's not amazing for us. That being said, we do have a 7-7 in play. Could also chill for a turn and then maybe hope to minus 5 Vivian and get something out of the sideboard. If we have one more land, we could get Palaka Worm, for example. So even though there's a risk we lose Vivian here, I think I'm just gonna stay back and then hope to be able to uh, leverage Vivian some more. And Chandra's not quite ultimating yet. No problem. Fire can't solve. Find Steamkin. And once we minus 5 Vivian, we can maybe kill Chandra, we'll see. Plays out the Steamkin. A Lava Runner grows Steamkin. So yeah, if they have another Wizard's Lining, they could kill Vivian instead of Firebrand. Let's see if they are interested in attacking Vivian. Just shoot it for one. So we can't minus five. Fair enough. Alright, they are still attacking. So let's eat another Lava Runner. Ooh, Nissa was a good draw. Alright, let's play Nissa. Untap of forests. Give them both a counter and trample. This will be fun to watch. If I just send a troll, they can jump with Steamkin. Chandra takes five, takes out presumably Vivian. And um, then they still get to keep Chandra in play for a turn. I think I'll send both at Chandra. Despite dealing 12 damage, they still only remove seven counters, so at most they can deal seven to our face or take out one of our planeswalkers. And then uh, without Chandra in play, it should be a lot easier to manage their board. But let's it happen. And let's see if they go face or if they try and take out one of our planeswalkers. And yeah, it goes face, so we're down to eight. But we do have a 4-4 in play, an 8-8 eight eight that we can give Hexproof. So we'll see. Chain Warlord means they can trade off for the forest and knock down a bit of loyalty from our planeswalkers. But they are down to one card in hand. So unless they top deck Frenzy, we should be okay. Attacks us with both creatures. We'll trade for Steamkin. Down to five. More Vivians, so let's animate another land. Play a backup Vivian. With the Arcbow at my side, I can't lose a fight. And do I kill the Chain Whirler? I think my plan is just to plus, and then next turn I can minus Vivian to get a Palaka Worm, for example, and then we should be pretty safe. So I don't think I can attack here, because if I attack, then we'll only have one blocker and we die to a three damage burn spell. Maybe should have still attacked with our Vigilant land here. It's bad if they have a burn spell, because then first strike and a burn spell can take out our land and we lose a blocker without the opponent losing the Chain Whirler. And then they can attack us back and I guess uh, it kind of adds up to the same as if they just burnt our face. Could just be that right now, if they have two burn spells in hand. Alright, not our Chain Whirler, that's annoying, since that means we're not our turn away from uh, the minus five on Vivian.
So let's animate another land. Can't really attack into the first strikers. And let's see for dead. And there's a frenzy, but this turn shouldn't be too bad. Find Steamkin. Alright. So let's see if there's anything better we can search up than Palanca Worm. Probably still go with the Worm here. Get out of burn range and then we can start attacking. If we had an end race forerunner in the sideboard we might have been able to end the game right now. So that's definitely another card worth considering to add to the sideboard. It's definitely a bit ambitious since it is expensive, but if you do have the Nissan play, then there could be a situation where uh, it's the right card to go get with the Vivian. Our opponent can of course burn us out from 11, but we've got uh, quite a board presence. Sends everyone. So... This seems fine. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Monorad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, we've got a pretty decent opener. With a bit of acceleration into Anissa. Let's see what we're up against. Swamp into Knight of Avalesian. Could be Vampires. So, if I play the troll, I have kind of the protection up, which is nice and can block the knights. How much do we want to ramp out this Nissa? If I play Druid, we can play Nissa next turn, so that could be worth it. And then we can go Nissa, maybe attack with our land into one of our two drops. Vampires confirmed. It's gonna be Legion Lieutenant. Letting them attack for two, we'll take it. And Vinemare's pretty good too against him. We will not fail. The land fights for us. And we'll play the troll. So not a bad turn three. Opponent does not have Soren to match our Nissa. Attacks us with Knight of Avon Legion. Don't think I'm interested in blocking. It would force them to pump, which could be a good thing. But um, we'll hang on to the troll for now. It's going to be a Dante Vanguard. Alright. So we'll start by attacking with our Vigilant Lands. I can kind of empty my hand here. Thing the troll can get in there too. Opponent's gonna double block the troll. I'll happily take out lieutenants. Opponent will still be forced to pay the four on the vanguard, otherwise it will die as well. Unless they've got a trick. Alright, I think our opponents might have messed up there or they couldn't afford to pay the four life. Either way, we'll uh, play Vinemare. And then end of turn I can adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian. Oh, 
All right, and our opponent explodes, so good old-fashioned turn 3 Nissa. Still pretty good even in a Stompy deck. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a 2-drop. So it's a little bit on the clunky end of the spectrum, but probably still got to keep. And we've got two draw steps to find something to play on turn two. Turn on the Glacial Fortress, so likely Asper. All right, Jeskai instead. Haven't seen that in a while. Let's attack for one, and uh, opponent has a shock for Pelt Collector anyway. All right, this hand could be okay against Jeskai. They do have a Deafening Clarion as a nice answer for Vinemare. Might actually be better to play Troll instead of uh, Steel Leaf here, since Steel Leaf just gets bound by Teferi anyway. The upside of Steel Leaf is that it doesn't die to Clarion, but if they Clarion to kill the Troll, then they're not killing the Vinemare, which is what we prefer. And as soon as we get Vivian down, we can get Vinemares out of Clarion range. They can still have Cleansing Nova. But that's not uh, a card we can really play around. Alright. Opponent keeping up 3 mana. The Jeskai Planeswalker deck does run uh, Spell Pierce, so that's a card we need to keep in mind. So I think we'll start by just uh, attacking Teferi here, see what they do. Alright, that worked. So, I don't think I want to play Vivian into Spell Pierce necessarily. They probably would have killed the troll given the chance, so I don't think they have another shock in hand. So they could be holding a sweeper, and if that sweeper is a Clarion, playing Vinemare is bad. So maybe the play is still Vivian, since we have a second one. If it gets Spell Pierce, it's not the end of the world. Alternatively, I can play Steel Leaf. Maybe that's even better plays around Spell Pierce a little bit, doesn't die to Clarion, and if they Cleansing Nova, then Vinemare is good to go. It's gonna be a Sarkon instead, that's fine. Makes a Dragon. So this is a great window to resolve Vivian. I can minus to fight a Dragon here, essentially. And deal 5 to them, 2 to Sarkon. We've got a Vivian in play. So even if they wipe the board, we can still kind of uh, leverage our Planeswalker. And we don't need to commit many more creatures to the board here. We can just start plusing Vivian until they deal with what we have in play. The fairy bounces Steel Leaf. All right, so we can play Vinemare plus Vivian, replenish the plus one counter on the troll, as well as getting the Vinemare out of Clarion range. Probably should have attacked the fairy first. Bones just got an opts. All right. This will be fun to watch. Only time will tell. So we're in a pretty good spot. Point of needs cleansing Nova, and again Chandra doesn't deal any damage to Vinemare. And no one is telling me what to do. Get out of my way. So just kills a troll, another Vinemare to draw. I guess I'm okay committing a Steel Leaf to the board here. One on each seems fine. This will be fun to watch. And if we can keep them off having a critical mass of planeswalkers in play, then the Jeskai planeswalker deck isn't too scary. Since a lot of their card advantage relies on them being able to activate their planeswalkers over and over. Sarkon also requires a few friends to be in play. It's gonna be Sahili. Doesn't block Steely very well. Even if they make a bunch of servos, and the trample from Vivian also means the servos uh, don't block much. Narset finds backup Narsets. 
more Vine Mares. I guess I'm okay playing one more. And then basically kill both Planeswalkers here. I think the play is going to be Vine Mare. And then plus some both Vine Mares to get them out of Clarion range. And we don't need Trample on Steel Leaf to attack past the Servo here. Be fun to watch. At some point we can start killing the opponents, but for now I'm happy doing this. So yeah, next turn we could go for the kill, give both Vine Mares Trample. If they go land into Cleansing Nova we'll be sad, but looks like Narset misses and our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet, able to be just guy super friends, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an excellent looking hand, so we'll keep. We've got uh, two good one drops. Usually want to play the Lanner Elves first, as it just gives us more options in future turns. Although going Pelt Collector into Guardian gets us a bit more damage early on. Up against turn 1 Watery Grave, so likely some Esper deck. We'll just go Pelt Collector into Guardian. And then hopefully we can play Vivian next turn, which is going to be pretty sweet. And since we're on the play, we don't need to worry about Cryo Carnarium here. Alright, Thought Erasure likely taking Vivian, although Vinemar is also going to be difficult for them to deal with unless they have a Kaya's Wrath. So hopefully they don't have one of those. If I play Vinemar, then Pelt Collector doesn't die to Cry, but we lose the Guardian. If I adapt the Guardian, we lose a Pelt Collector, and we could potentially get Thought Erasure again. Also, if they have Allegiance and they get to deal with the Guardian and the one in play. So I think I'm just going to play Vinemar here. And then hope we can dodge a turn for Kaya's Wrath. It's just going to be a Narset. So that's going to make it pretty likely for them to have some sort of sweeper. I do get to adapt the Growth Chamber Guardian and get a backup. So that's nice. Don't think I want to commit the troll to the board here. And we can't quite kill our opponent yet. We can put our opponent to two, which isn't quite lethal. So I think we'll adapt, get a backup. Assuming our opponent's going to Chaos Wrath us next turn. And send these at them. Having access to the seven Planeswalkers in the deck is uh, quite nice against Sweeper Heavy Control decks, but alright, looks like they either didn't have the mana or didn't have the Chaos Wrath. And we got there, sweet, onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and having a turn 1 Lanner Elves in our opener doesn't hurt. So yeah, we'll keep... We could set up for another turn 3 Nissa. we could run out to turn 2 Steel Leaf, depends what we're up against I suppose. Godless Shrine, so looks like we're up against another Vampire deck. Well, we could just have a repeat of the previous match. Turn to Vanguard and grow the Knight of Abel Legion by paying for life, and there's a land right on time. The land for us. I think I'm okay attacking since I don't mind trading for the Knight of Abel Legion. Opponent takes it, we'll play a troll. Troll can maybe jump in front of the Adanto Vanguard. Do they have the turn 3 Sorin, unlike our previous vampire opponents? Still no. Tax Nissa with both. I think we do this, and if they want to save the Vanguard, they're down to a pretty low life total here. Nissa down to 4, and the Legion's landing into Aspirant, into another 1-drop, presumably. Second Aspirant. 
All right, that's a lot of creatures. We'll just uh, play Guardian. Don't think we're attacking with our Mana Elves. But I'm okay with any trades. And if I were to adapt the Guardian, I could also play another copy. I guess that's reasonable. They still all die to Allegiance End, but... Uh, set up that lethal attack for next turn, potentially. Alright, there's Soren. Plosses on Knights. So if we let that go, our opponent goes up to 10, they have one blocker. I think we can let that happen, and then we should still have lethal here. Alright, opponent sees a riding on a wall and packs it up. So managed to beat two Vampire's opponents, although we did have kind of the nut draw both times with uh, turn 3 Nissa. But yeah, overall I've been pretty happy with the deck. I think it's one of the decks with the highest win rates I've had of any deck so far in uh, M20 standard. So yeah, if you're looking for something that has a good chance against basically the entire field, Mono Green Stompy is not a bad one. And uh, we do lose a few cards with rotation. Lanner Elves, of course, the big one, Steel Leaf Champion at 3 but uh, a lot of new cards as well that will survive rotation. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.